Hi everyone, welcome back to Stitchy Bee. I'm Cheryl Temple. Okay, this week I am making the Stella hoodie from Tilly and the Buttons book, Stretch. Um, it's one of the fantastic patterns in here. As soon as I bought this book, I knew I wanted to make this pattern um, ready in time for autumn. So here it is. So I made two of them. This first one I made, um, I've totally copied Tilly's styling in the book and I've made it with a beautiful pale pink sweatshirt fleece and um, the hood is lined with a jersey um, t-shirt fabric, 95% cotton. Um, it's very similar to the perfect jersey that I sell as well. I've got a little bit of this left, um, but not very much. Uh, there's not much available. It's so hard trying to find stripy jersey fabric. So I'll pop links below, but if it's gone, I'm so sorry. I just can't get enough of it in. Now with the, um, the tie or the cord that goes through, I bought shoelace for this or a pair of shoelaces. And these were from Amazon. This one is a little bit long actually, because when I bought them, I didn't have the book open in front of me. So it's probably a bit long, isn't it? Um, but these are 180 centimetres. It could probably do with being 150, I think. I think 150 is what it should be. Um, so that's this pink one. The grey one that I'm wearing um, is almost exactly the same in terms of how I've made it. Uh, both of them have um, the sleeve extended by four centimetres for me because I'm tall, lanky. And um, also I bought this little motif to sew on, um, or to iron on actually. These are iron on letters that I bought off eBay. I'll pop links to where I found these from. They're only a couple of pounds um, each, I think. So if that, um, so these had a really nice touch. It gives it that kind of high schooly feel. I think that's quite cute. With the tie on this one, I recycled a cord from a hoodie that I was um, recycling. So I took this out um, before it went off um, and that's always worth looking out for. I know lots of people take buttons off things but um, it's worth remembering things like this when you sew. So um, with the grey one, <coughs> um, as well as um, adding the four centimetres to the sleeve, I also added a band at the bottom. I, I often do this with things um, if it's not quite long enough. I wanted one a little bit longer try and step back a bit so you can see how long it is so it's about there and I think it's a lot more um, comfortable I think if it just covers the top of your hips for me anyway or you could wear it shorter but I quite like it with this band added so I made that piece up myself in terms of pattern and it's pretty similar to how the cuff supplied you just make a band for the bottom and then make sure um, it's slightly shorter than the circumference of the bottom of the top otherwise it'll bag out a bit um, I can't tell you how long it was in the end because I just kept making it and then trimming it down just to try and get it the right length so you'll have to play around with it but it does need to be a good amount shorter than the actual top for it to fit snugly and nicely at the bottom I could probably go in a bit more with this actually because it's still not quite not quite snug enough I think for a hoodie bottom but it's not a bad first attempt and I'm quite happy with it loose. So onto the book as is always the case with um, Tilly's patterns the ones I've made anyway her instructions are fantastic um, there's lots of descriptions lots of photographs and there are little useful tips throughout as well so for example with the sleeve piece um, Usually a sleeve's got a front and a back, hasn't it? And I was thinking, has this one? And she even puts a little note in saying, the sleeve doesn't have a front or a back, so you could slot it in each way um, you like, which is helpful, just helps. Um, yeah, the front and the back of the sleeve are identical, so don't worry about which sleeve goes with which armhole. Little um, tips like that are really good. It just saves you from hunting out the information or going wrong. And it's also um, sewn on the flat as well. So it's not like applying um, or sewing a usual um, sleeve in the round. It's all done on the flat. It's super easy. Now, um, in terms of difficulty, I would say this is fairly simple. There are a few techniques in it. 
What I quite liked about it is the fact that the hood is made totally separately on its own before you start anything else, so that's quite nice. Um, and you actually have a hood to hold and it's all sewn and neatly done and, and it's great. So that's, I quite like that, that's, that's quite a nice touch. And then you um, simply sew it as described and then it all comes together quite quickly. So I think that's the bit that takes the longest. Um, yeah, I would say this, so this grey one, I made this morning for you, so I, I rushed to get that done uh, for this vlog this afternoon. This took me three hours, including a lunch break for a sandwich and a cup of tea. So that's going fairly, fairly quickly. I'm not the fastest sewer, um, but I think that was, it's probably about a good amount of time, I'd say three hours-ish, once it's cut out pattern-wise. Um, but yeah, I suppose anything the second time round is going to be quicker, isn't it? I made this one first. Um, so yeah, it's a, quite a simple make. Um, a couple of things to be mindful of. So there are buttonholes um, to uh, work out here. Uh, so do practice your buttonholes if you're not used to doing them. I had to get my instructions out for my machine that I do my buttonholes on um, because I can never quite remember <laughs> which way round to do it and I couldn't find my buttonhole foot um, and then I found it so yeah one of these is a little bit iffy because I tried it without the foot on and it's not a good idea so anyway with these this one's perfect also what you want to do with buttonholes excuse my hair is if you use a seam ripper to open them that's fine but I think with sweatshirt fabric or anything fluffy you really need a neatened edge so I've got one of these um, scary looking um, buttonhole chisels and um, these are a few pounds from them somewhere like Amazon it's quite sharp so it comes in a sleeve um, you can see there look so you have to be careful with that keep it away from the kids um, and also when you're you don't need to hammer it or anything I just pressed mine down um, you need a self-healing mat underneath or it'll wreck your table but I didn't have mine to hand so I just used an old uh, notepad on the end something you know to take the strain but it will cut through it's very sharp and it gives you a much nicer finish um, than just tearing it with a seam ripper so I'll, I'll pop a link to where I bought mine um, from on Amazon underneath Another tool I used when I was making the hood um, is uh, my tailor's ham um, and with the instructions it says when you're actually sewing because you have to sew the curve on the hood I wondered about clipping into the seam to make it you know smoother or if it had gather and I did on the pink one but the instructions say you don't need to so on my grey one I just used this to gently iron or press the seam before I inserted the inside part and that helps keep it smoother um, you can see there. there's also behind the buttonhole it needs a tiny little bit of interfacing so if you've got any odd scraps hanging um, lying around then use it for that it just helps stabilize that buttonhole a little bit more and then of course um, inserting these is pretty simple you could wrap it round a uh, a safety pin or you could use a bodkin or you could use uh, a darning needle if it, it will go through the eye so it did in case of this with these it's got a little metal end so I just push that through on its own and it worked through fine but yeah there's nothing else too tricky um, applying the cuffs can be a little bit fiddly what you could do is if you want to overlock your insides which you don't need to on all fabrics I didn't with this one um, but with the French Terry I did so with French Terry it's very much like a toweling underneath I'll show you on the fabrics in a second and it does the bits go everywhere so it's worth overlocking that because they do it's like sewing with velvet or you know that type of thing they do scatter so and bear with it because it's so worth it I much prefer this fabric but you do get a few bits when you're sewing it so yeah um, overall I'm really happy with this pattern um, I'd definitely make it again um, the instructions are so easy 
I don't think there's many places you can go wrong. You just have to make sure um, that the hood part sits flush when you insert the hood and it really does as well. It, it's funny because all Tully's patterns are like this. They, they're, I think they're so well drafted. Um, everything, all the notches line up, everything fits as it should. It's so not stressful sewing a Tilly pattern, I think. So um, yeah, I'm definitely gonna sew a few more because I've not sewn many of her things. I think this is the third, third thing I've made, maybe the fourth. Um, but I must go through and do the other ones because this has been great. So there you go, have a bash. Um, it's a lovely one to make. I think you could convert it for your kids as well. Um, just make the smaller ones, depends how little they are. Um, if you want to make a boys one. Um, there are boys patterns and adult patterns out there, but for my kids who were 10 and 15, I could use this because they're not so broad. I could just straighten off the curve on the waist. Um, so yeah, I think I'll do that for them because they've got long arms as well and it's nice to have that custom fit isn't it so yeah it's a good versatile pattern so i think i'll be uh, popping this onto card and hanging it on my um, favorite patterns hooks um, ready to do some more so um fabric wise i was quite surprised actually at the fabric suggestions which are brilliant i hadn't thought of half of them um, that tilly suggests to use for this so i'll go through some of the ones she suggests and it might give you a few ideas um because you can customize these and make them your own and the hood's brilliant to use up bits of scraps of fabric that you've got in your stash so you probably don't need to buy that much to make this um, so let's go through the list. I'll find it for you and then I'll show you some examples of fabric that you could make it from. Okay, so my closer look at fabric this week is going to be for uh, sweatshirt fabric. I'll call it that rather than anything else because then I can show you a few examples of things you could make this in, which I think will be a bit more helpful. So um, the first one is sweatshirt fleece, which is what this is made from. So this is a mainly a cotton fabric with a the polyester element is to do with the little fleecy background so i've shown you this before but i'll give you another close-up so here we are it's a gorgeous quality fabric this it's not cheap to buy i know um but it's it's really luxurious so on the back you've got that fluffy element that you'll be familiar with from most sweatshirt fabrics are like this aren't they it's really cozy uh, it's very soft and the cotton elements great and it's just stretchy enough um, to get over your head um, and it's it's got plenty of give um, yeah horizontally so fantastic so you can get these in a few colors I've just got um, this one at the moment which I've called rosy cheek for obvious reasons and I really liked it I think it's it it, it does it does kind of brighten you up if it's a dull day Next up, she recommends French Terry. So the grey one's French Terry. Um, I can't find a sample of my grey. So I've also bought this in red. Sue, I am listening to you. I'm buying more fabrics in red. So there you go. So here we are. This is a little example of it. On the reverse, it's very much like a little towel or toweling. That's why the little bits go everywhere when you cut it. But if you can cope with that, it's amazing. And you can see it's a little bit drapier and a lot more um, wearable for indoors, I'd say. So whereas this really nice sweatshirt fabric would be great for, for out walking and you could use it in place of a coat, whereas this one's a little bit lighter um, where you could wear it indoors. You could also make a dress from this as well. It's gorgeous. So yeah, that's the red French terry grey French terry and um, you can buy it in other colours as well. Um, I've just got these two for now. Okay also in the um, recommended fabric list is some stretch velour which I don't have any in at the moment. I've not quite ordered that yet it's more of a wintry fabric and um, some Ponty Roma so you can make this in Ponty. Now I would choose if I was going to do it in Ponty I'd pick something like this um, I've got this in grey and this gorgeous ochre colour. This would look really nice, I think, as a hoodie. In fact, you could use the grey in the same 
um, style to line the hood um, or vice versa that would be quite cool um, but yeah it's quite it's quite a, a drapey ponty this one rather than it being some of them are thicker than others aren't they but I really love this it just feels so luxurious something like that would work really well and you get a lighter effect just make sure that the lining of your hood is not really heavier than the outer fabric because I think it'll weigh it down a bit um, so I've tried to use a, a lighter fabric than the outerwear. I don't know if that's a proper rule, but I've kind of worked that out as I've been going along. It would make sense to do that. So for lining the hood, um, I've chosen the stripey um, jersey, which this is it here. I only have this, so chances are, if you go and look for this on my site, it's probably gone sorry about that i i am so cross because i ordered this bolt as a tester to see what it's like i'm obsessed with it and i've had it for a few weeks and i've been hanging on to it for the, these projects and i can't get any more um exactly like this it's like the perfect jersey 95 percent cotton and it's amazing and you just can't get many good stripe um fabrics these days but i'm on a mission i will get you some but it won't be really soon but as soon as I've got them I'll let you know. I also managed to get it in a similar style in a slightly narrower knit. Again I've just got a bolt of this. They've they they bring <laughs> they bring these out and then they discontinue them. It's so frustrating. Um but I'll I'll sort it. Don't worry. I'll get you some more because I like these for spring. They make some brilliant um t shirt long long sleeve t shirt tops don't they? That kind of nautical vibe. Um, so yeah they're lovely to line your hood with or you could just use what you've got in your stash you could use t-shirt jerseys as I say and um, you can also use interlock for the outer fabric which it's probably quite a light fabric to do that but if you think about some hoodies they're not really outerwear they're a kind of layering piece aren't they so if you wanted something to wear with a gilet and then a coat um, to layer up you could really make it from an interlock um, I've got one here that I'll show you in case you didn't see my other video um, this is um, I've called it ravy blue because I think it's a cross between a royal blue and a navy but this is a hundred percent cotton interlock jersey and it comes in a tube so you have to snip down one end um, to open it out and that makes it super wide I think it ends up being about 160 wide this so you can get lots of pieces out of a, a small amount and it's it's gorgeous so this would make a lovely layering piece in that pattern um, I might have a go at that again just think about your lining not, not being too heavy and also the cord don't use anything too heavy for that something lightweight and um, maybe another another shoelace like this one um, that's really light something that's not dragging it down too much so yeah in summary I loved this pattern it also comes with the Stella joggers as well the uh, sweatpants or jogging bottoms and I'm, I'm not making those yet because I've got the Hudson pants on my make nine to list um, on my make nine list to make so I think I'll probably make them first before trying these but yeah you could so match these um, with the pants the jogging bottoms especially in the French terry I think these this would make better jogging bottoms than say the sweatshirt fleece and you could so do it in this because I think Aunt Tilly did on her her pattern um, but yeah I think it would be nicer and they would drape better on me um, in the French terry so it's up to you anyway so there you go um, have a bash let me know what you think let me know if you've made it and what i like about it is that you can mix and match all the different color combinations and really make it yours so i love the fact that you've got a contrasting color here you could make it the same if you wanted and there's no reason why you could make a plain one but i like the fun elements with the tie and the lining okay i'll pop links to all the bits and bobs that i mentioned underneath um, if you're interested Right, so that's my closer look at fabric this week. It's all about the sweatshirt. Um, so next week, I'm gonna come back with a new indie designer that I've discovered. I'm gonna make something from one of her selection and um, I won't say who it is yet because I want to test it out. <laughs> so bear with me. Um, and there's a couple I've found actually. So 
I might just do a little feature on new designers that I've discovered because you know I always often make so over it and tilling the buttons so I'm spreading my wings and looking elsewhere for other patterns I, I've made other stuff as you know but I do stick to these as favorites don't I so to give you a bit more variety I'm going to explore some other other brands okay hope you have a lovely week happy Wednesday or whatever day it is when you're watching this and I'll see you next time you take care bye for now